From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Our top story this evening. A body was found this morning near the University of Alaska Fairbanks campus, according to Alaska State Troopers. That's right. After arriving on scene shortly after 10.30 a.m., they said a man's body was found by a passerby off a bike path that runs near the university. Troopers went on to say the manner of death is not yet clear and the investigation is continuing. University police responded initially and then called for trooper backup. Now a section of the bike trail was closed down for most of the morning due to the investigation. The deceased man has yet to be identified. That, uh, we got a call this morning uh, about a body that was found next to the bike trail here. Uh, we're investigating as an unattended death right now. We're not releasing any details about the name of the subject. We have not notified next of kin, uh, and at this point, the investigation continues. Fairbanks Police and Fairbanks Fire Department are responding to the scene of another dead body found this afternoon. According to authorities on scene, the unidentified person was found on a bike path near the Steese Highway. Little detail was available as to the circumstances of the death, and neither the gender nor the identity of the person has been released. Uh, what we got going on down the bike path here off the Steese Highway is, uh, looks like a fatality. Um, somebody in the snowbank looks like they've been there a while. Now the uh, police department right now is investigating the scene right now and the person is deceased. New developments in the murder trial for the May 2014 killing of two Alaska State Troopers. Nathaniel Kangas, the 19-year-old man accused of gunning down the officers inside his Tannenau home, will be tried separately from his father, Arvin Kangas, who was also charged in connection with the killing. This morning, Superior Court Judge Paul Lyle made the ruling after both parties' lawyers agreed to separate the two cases. Arvin Kangas will, will be tried in Nanana this April on charges of tampering with physical evidence. The prosecution says this is a serious offense as the elder Kangas is accused of moving the troopers' bodies and weapons after they'd been shot. His son Nathaniel's trial has been delayed until November due to what's been called the magnitude of the case. Another issue was security at the trial. Arvin's lawyer argued too many troopers infringed on his client's due process. He uh, objects to revealing anything further about the security uh, plan. Uh, based on the office, uh, the officers' uh, safety and the safety of the people in the courtroom, uh, including the defendant, and I'm not going to require him to reveal anything more about the security plan than that. The Alaska House advanced a state operating budget just after midnight this morning, following hours of debate. The bill passed 25 to 14. House Democrats made failed attempts to restore budget items such as provisions related to Medicaid expansion and funding for early childhood programs and the ferry system. The $5.4 billion budget represents nearly $274 million less in funds for agency operations than the current year. Lawmakers are grappling with how to downsize state government given projected multi-billion dollar deficits amid low oil prices. The budget next goes to the Senate. I am going to push the green button, but we are not done. This budget will be coming back, and I'll, I'm going to be the first one to say it better come back even lower than it is now. And this budget just turns another corner, takes another step. Whether we did good or not, at the end of the day, we might disagree on the result. We might have different opinions from what we have today going down the road for what actually worked and what, di what didn't. Lawyers say trial will be delayed for a Barrow couple accused of the murder of a Fairbanks man. 39-year-old Abraham Stein and his girlfriend, 31-year-old Dominique Vasquez, are accused of killing Wesley Lord at the Extended Stay Hotel. Both appeared in Superior Court yesterday afternoon. According to prosecutors, over 360 pages of evidence have been collected, including items from a vehicle that was impounded by investigators. Court documents allege Vasquez told Stein that Lord had raped her at the hotel. Investigators say Stein beat the man while Vasquez covered his mouth so he could not be heard by other hotel guests. Okay, when we come back, even though there is snow on the ground, Alaska wildfire fire fighters are preparing for a potentially early fire season. Also, today at the Tannenau Middle School, hair was flying all over the place as many were giving up their locks for a worthy cause. Stay with us. Welcome back. Alaska wildfire fighters are preparing for an early fire season this summer. Instructors are predicting sooner than usual confrontations with forest fires due to the recent 
usually warm temperatures. Wildland fire teachers are responding by starting classes ahead of schedule in rural communities as well as the interior. The projected early start for forest fires in Alaska means there will be extra demand for professional firefighters. Wildland Fire Professor Louis Silas says the University of Alaska Fairbanks and the Alaska Division of Forestry are still looking for firefighting students. I know I just got done with a round of training up in Fort Yukon. Uh, the university is putting on a lot of classes, getting crews hired. Um, so there's a lot of training going on uh, in preparation for the upcoming season. Um, I believe crews are going to start uh, working pretty soon, so that all involves a lot of training. And so that's kind of what we've been doing too. We'll have more information about the early fire season and what it means for Alaska next week. An Ielson Air Force Base couple was rescued by Alaska State Troopers after getting stranded on a trip to Tolovana Hot Springs. According to a release, Daniel and Shelmary Shinsky had taken their snow machine to the hot springs at nearly 30 below zero. The couple became stuck about six miles from the trailhead and decided to attempt a walk to the cabins near the hot springs. They ended up taking shelter in an empty plastic water tank, but were not properly dressed for the extreme cold. The troopers were able to rescue the couple after friends called in about the situation. No injuries were reported in the incident. The wood bison, the largest land animal in North America, was on the extinct list for 17 years. They died out in Alaska about 90 years ago, but in 1957, 23 of the animals were found in a remote part of Canada. To be listed as extinct, the number of animals known to be alive has to be zero. Canada started a program to regrow the herd, and in 2003, 13 wood bison from the Yukon Territory were brought to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Five years later, another 50 calves arrived. They are the only wood bison in the United States, and now a plan is in the works to release 50 of the animals into the wild. They will identify these animals as being not only endangered, but also uh, experimental and non-essential. And by considered uh, endangered and non-essential, they can go onto the land without that land being restricted for future development. As we told you earlier this week, local firefighters have been raising money to help fight childhood cancer. And they get a lot of help with the project. Today, a St. Baldrick's head shaving event was held at Tananaw Middle School to raise money for research. The school has hosted the event for the past several years and staff stepped up to help with the fundraiser. Students had already raised over $1,700 and they expect to have more by the time the real St. Baldrick's event is held a week from now. Even the Tananaw principal got into the act today. Well, if we raised over $1,000, we would get the um, uh, shaving and one of the staff members uh, coerced me, if you will, <laughs> and I submitted to getting my uh, hair colored because I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. So, Daryl, are you going to be giving up any hair for the event? Well, no, but, I, you know, you got a haircut today, and I, I thought you actually were going to go. I think you'd look good, Bob. Oh, there was only... <laughs> No, there was only about an inch, so that couldn't make much of a wig. No, probably not. But next time, go for broke. No yeah, way. Real good. Yeah, it absolutely. is for a good cause, but I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I could do it. But <laughs> women who do want to do it, they are accepting, you know, eight inches or longer for the Locks of Love program. So Very good. Just to let you know. Okay. Joe Cook is next with footage of today's NCAA Rifle Championships at the Patty Center. And the Limited North American Championships started today as well. Those stories and more coming up right after the break in sports. Welcome back Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here to get your weekend started right with some Friday sports. Today, the Alaska Natick Rifle Team started their quest for their 11th national title. Starting bright and early at 8 a.m., the Alaska Natick shot in the small board portion of the championships. While the Nooks and their opposition were shooting downstairs in EF Horton Rifle Range, fans and Natick supporters enjoyed the first ever Fan Fest in the Patty Center. People tried their hand at shooting targets and wearing rifle gear. There were four relays of small bore. After three relays, Tim Cherry and Ryan Anderson are in the top three. They both shot at least 585. Mots Erickson was fifth, and national champion in small bore will be crowned tonight. 
The 2014-2015 season ended today for the Alaska ski teams. In the last day of the NCAA championships, three Nanooks placed in the top 40 led by Logan Hahnemann. The senior late the product finished the 20K Classic in 58 minutes, 36.4 seconds for 20th overall. Fellow senior Jonas Loeffler finished 39th overall, while sophomore Anatina Marxet led the women's team finishing 38th in the 15K Classic. The Nanooks earned silver at NCAA regionals and had six all-academic skiers this season. The Nanix swim team is still competing in Indianapolis for the NCAA championships. Today, freshman Martha Hood led all Nanooks with a personal best 57 second swim and the 100 backstroke for 28th overall. Senior swimmer Margo Adams swam 54 32 in the 100 butterfly on Thursday, setting a new varsity record for UAF and was good enough for fifth place. Adams earned All-American honors and has been an All-American and All-Conference 100 butterfly swimmer in her entire four-year Nana career. UAF was also All-America uh, All honorable mention in the 200 freestyle and 400 medley relay teams. Saturday, Alaska will swim in the 400 freestyle relay and three will compete in the 100 freestyle races. Thursday, two Alaska seniors will continue their hockey careers in the same league. Senior and assistant captain Garrett Perry signed with the Cincinnati Sign Clones and senior defenseman Trevor Campbell to the Bakersfield Condors at the ECHL. Perry joins former UAF teammate Michael Quinn, who graduated last season from UAF. Perry finished with 48 points in 119 career games. Campbell, a senior defenseman for Alaska, signed an amateur tryout agreement with the Bakersfield Condors of the ECHL. Campbell appeared in 129 career games for UAF, tallying 50 points, 9 goals, and 41 assists. Out at the Jeff Studdard race grounds this morning was the opening day of the Animet Limited North American Championships. Six ski doors and 27 mushers competed for purses in their respective classes in the first day of the three-day event. Start times have been delayed because of the below zero temps this morning. Saturday and Sunday races will start at noon. Pan Chamber zipped through the four dog class race, finishing first 14 minutes, 18 points suit. 18.2 seconds. Don Brown, the defending four and eight dog mushing event champion, tried her hand in the six dog class. She came in first today in 18 minutes, 23 and a half seconds. Thursday, West Valley's Ruthie Hebert was named Alaska Gatorade Player of the Year. It's the second straight year she's won the award. The do everything forward is averaging 25.6 points, 13.1 rebounds, 3.5 steals, and 2.8 assists per game with a 3.5 GPA and leads an undefeated West Valley team into the state tournament. She even scored 51 points earlier this year. The number one overall seed West Valley girls will play Thunder Mountain at 8 a.m. next Thursday in the Sullivan Arena. There, has, there have been some questions about this matchup since the undefeated West Valley team has to play so early. In an email to KTVS Forest, ASAA Executive Director Billy Strickland outlined the criteria for seating, which includes how competitive the games may be, the number of students likely to attend, etc. He said, quote, we would try to allow the local school students the chance to come to the game without missing class time. This does make it more likely that a local school will get the day one primetime slots. Strickland also said there is room for improvement for all the state tournament brackets. Visit the sports page on webcenter11.com. Here's today's Iditarod leaderboard provided by Cold Spot and the Holy Dog Pet Boarding. Bid 63, Bib 63. Aaron Burmeister is the leader at this point with 13 dogs in Huslia. He hasn't had an eight hour rest yet, though. Defending champion Dallas CV is second. Rookie Thomas Warner is third overall. And Fairbanks' own Ken Anderson is in fourth place. Hugh Neff rounds out the top five. The next checkpoints are Koya, Coke, Koya Cook and Nolato. Today, you get two plays for the play of the week because the votes, they ended up in a tie. They're both from the Alaska Nanak hockey team. Tyler Morley scored what would be the Gov Cup winning shootout goal against UAA last Saturday night. But then Sean Cahill, he shuts out the Seawolves in the shootout to clinch the sixth straight Gov Cup for the Alaska Nanooks, as well as making 36 saves in the last two games of the Gov Cup and shutting out UAA last Friday night. Alaska finishes as the hottest team in the country with a 7-0-1 record. To vote for the next play of the week, watch for the I-5. Interior top five plays on Mondays during the weekend recap. And that's it for sports, but come back tonight for the sports nightcap for national championship rifle results and more. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into the Fairbanks Evening News for a Friday night. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about weather, and it was a day just like yesterday. Cloudy skies, flurries here and there, a little bit of sunshine, and we're looking at this to continue through the weekend, but temperatures should continue 
to rise. And we have an interesting photograph to share with you tonight. This is not Egyptian hieroglyphics. This is actually Diana Lekorchik's uh, front yard where she had lots of birds, hundreds of birds, she said, picking up seeds. And this is their path. They walked with their, their, uh, their feet. And that was pretty cool. She was able to capture that. A nice design. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, we'll send it to us at photos at ktvf11.com. Your almanac looks like this. Actually, we're going to talk right now about the satellite and radar. As you can see here, we're looking at uh, quite a bit of uh, clouds and moisture over the eastern side of the state. And that is continuing to bring us our moisture that gives us a little bit of flurry activity. To the west, just the opposite. Skies are clear and once again, cold temperatures. What's going on across the rest of the state? Well, as you can see here, Ketchikan, uh, 39 degrees, uh, cooler than they were yesterday, almost by 10 degrees, and some rain and snow shower activity there. The same for Juneau at 36. Kodiak reporting some rain and snow shower activity, 21 degrees there. And uh, the Anchorage Bowl, once again, chilly, 14 degrees. Elsewhere, up and down the west coast, temperatures right around zero to minus one degree at Nome. 26 below at Barrow and Fort Yukon, 4 degrees below zero. Lower 48 weather, we're going to head on down there right now and show you that rain has returned to the Pacific Northwest. But that's about it. Temperatures are warming up dramatically, 88 degrees at Phoenix. They're looking for 90 degree temperatures in Los Angeles tomorrow. Elsewhere, 60 degrees at Dallas and Denver. The rains have stopped around the Texas area. The only precipitation going on right now is uh, over the northeast with a little bit of rain act activity. As you can see why this uh, big blob of moisture just roaring up the eastern side of the uh, of the uh, jet stream there, which is helping to drive all that moisture. Otherwise, things are looking pretty good. Out to the west, a little more cloudiness, but uh, no precipitation expected there. But there is going to be a big storm breaking out for Saturday. Tomorrow, across much of the northeast, all that moisture you saw on the satellite radar, that's moving toward the northeast. And that could bring flooding conditions to folks out over the uh, the New England area with a mix of precipitation further to the north. So they just can't seem to get much of a, a winter or a spring this year yet. Okay, what's going on as far as the jet stream next week? Way up to the north. It doesn't, you don't see it that very that, that far very often. And you see warm temperatures will be uh, prevalent across much of the country with showers across the Gulf Coast. All right, back to Alaska for tomorrow. The northern sections, partly cloudy for Barrow, mostly sunny skies for Nome, and snow will be developing in the Fort Yukon area. Here in the interior, we'll be looking at uh, fog and flurries for Fairbanks, flurries and wind chill for the Healy area and the uh, passes there, and flurries expected at Delta. Over southeast Alaska, looks like one to three inches of snow possible at Juneau, with rain and snow possible for Ketchikan. And over the southwest part of the state, Rain and snow for Cold Bay, mostly sunny in Bethel, and snow showers at Kodiak. And over the south central regions, if you're heading on down to the Anchorage area, sunny skies expected in Anchorage and Homer with breezy conditions and maybe a little snow in the Valdez region. Okay, it is a Friday night, which means it's time for our winter trails report. Frigid temperatures will limit out outdoor activities, although the resorts will have their slopes open. You might want to call ahead just to be safe and see if they're open but some of them are expecting to be. And temperatures will slowly warm to the teens above at the higher elevations. A little bit of inversion going on there. Your forecast for tonight, cloudy skies with flurries. Not as cold as last night, 25 degrees below zero. And as far as tomorrow's forecast, three degrees below with continued cloudy skies and more flurries. But here comes the good news. Look at the five day. As you can see, temperatures dramatically rising by Monday to the mid 20s and low 30s for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Also, overnight lows will continue warming, too. We're looking at uh, temperatures coming back to where they should be for this time of year and even warmer by next weekend when we get our first, well, actually get to uh, the first day of spring, which I always like to it, say that. It has been cold. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. cold is yeah. all I can say. That's the best way to describe mm -hmm. it. But the, and the streets are really slick, too. Oh, yeah. They're I've buffed. noticed that. Yeah. yeah there, there's some, but there wasn't that much wind to buff them out. I don't know. I don't know. It's just maybe the heat from the people spending their tires at the intersection and stuff like that. And we're riding people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're road experts here. Inside here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. But that's good news that the warm weather is on the way. And, yep. uh, but it's still not so warm that it's going to instantly melt things around town. Right. No, no, it should be a gradual good. warming. Good. So another good full couple of weeks of the ice park. That'd be great. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, very good. Okay, thank you, Mike. And that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, where in the world is Russian President Vladimir Putin? That's next with Lester Holt. Oh, it's a, is this a game? I'm going to say when we're <laughs> Find, find Vladimir Putin. He's wearing the, the <laughs> never mind. He does, <laughs> he's not wearing the stripes, I can tell you that right now. So. Join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. And don't forget tomorrow, 
to watch the interiors only news and sportscast at 6 o'clock. Yeah, well, Mike Fussell mm -hmm. and Katie Looper from That's all of us right. here at the News Center. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you.